let's look at how to calculate the correlation coefficient and the line of regression, and then go ahead and graph that line once we have it. Just to get a sense of what the correlation coefficient is, it's a number between negative 1 and 1, so somewhere between negative 1 and 1, that describes how strong of a pattern your data forms. That's the 0 to 1 part, and then whether the slope is positive or negative will be the negative or positive part. When r is 0, right, it's not positive or negative, then there's no pattern at all. When r is 1, you have a really strong upwards pattern. And when r is negative 1, you have a very strong downwards pattern. Here's the tricky part that's going to catch you off guard. r is not the slope. It is not the slope at all. Yes, a negative pattern is going to have a negative value of r. But if you had a really strong negative pattern like this with an r of negative 1, you could also have a really strong pattern like this with an r of negative 1. In both cases, r is going to equal the same thing because both of them are very, very, very straight, perfectly straight lines, and both of them are slopes that are going down. Even though the slope is steeper, they are both r equals negative 1. Same idea for the positive. If you have a slope like this, r is equal to 1. A perfectly straight line of points, r equals 1. Or if I have it really, really, really gradual, so gradual that it's just barely going up, but it's perfectly straight, again, r is going to equal 1. So it's not how steep it is, it's just how straight it is and whether it's going up or down. To get a sense of what different values look like besides the 1 and negative 1, here's an example when r equals 0. There's no pattern. These points, you could not draw a line. That line or that line or that line, they would all be equally bad. So when r is 0, there's no pattern. Here's one where you can kind of see a slight pattern forming. Just barely a pattern forming, and it's a downward pattern, so negative, let's say, 0.3. Here, you have some kind of positive slope, but again, the pattern isn't super strong, maybe 0.5. And by the time you start getting up into like the 0.7s, this one's in this case going down, so it's a negative 0.7, the pattern's getting better, but again, still a lot of fuzziness around there. By 0.9, it's looking pretty clear that there's a very strong pattern going on. So when you get into the 0.9s, you're looking at a very good pattern. And then 0.99 is basically a straight line with just some little fuzziness above and below. Again, the positive number here because it's going up, negative number because it's going down. This first example here, uh, we're going to use our calculator to actually perform linear regression. And so to do so, uh, each calculator is going to be a little bit different, but we need to plug in the x value and the y value every one of these points. Every calculator is going to take the x and the y a little bit differently, so we'll look over that in class, but for those of you using the TI-83 or the TI-84, uh, you're going to use STAT, EDIT, and you're going to clear both your list 1, so go up and clear, enter, and you're going to go up and clear your list 2. We're going to use both lists this time. List 1 is going to be for your x's, and list 2 is going to be for your y's. So for your x's, we have 1986 as our first one, followed by 1987, 1988, and so forth. And you just type in every one of these x's in order. Make sure you don't skip any of them. And once you've got those all in, then you go over to your list too. And you're going to type in the length in this case, the y value. So 318 is our first y value. And you'll notice that if you look across here, 1986 lines up with 318 just like they line up over here. So 329. Oh, it looks like they've all got a decimal. So let's go ahead and make sure we correct that. 31.8, 32.9, 30.9, 31.8, 32.9. Apologize for the not as clear print there. And you'll go ahead and type these all in. 
When you're done typing all of the numbers in, the most important thing you can do is go back and make sure that nothing has any major errors. It's worth the time it takes to just flip through and check each of these numbers. So 86, 31.8, 87, 88, 30.0, your calculator will often just turn into 30 because it ignores that point zero. And you're looking to make sure you didn't do anything really dumb, like leave out a decimal. Because if you do something like that, it's going to really mess up your data and you'll wonder what is going on. So we did our quick check. And now we click Stat. Go over to Calc, just like we are going to do uh, mean or standard deviation. But instead of one var stats, we're going to go down to Linreg. Linreg right here. And we're going to push Enter and push Enter a second time. And we get a screen that looks like this. If for some reason you don't have the R squared in the R, only if that's the case, I want you to do something. Um, I'm going to first put these numbers to the side, but I'm going to show you if you don't have those numbers coming up, go ahead and go to second zero, second catalog, and hit the this key here for the D. And you're going to go to diagnostic on. So you go down a little bit, and when you see diagnostic on, you will hit enter, and hit enter again. So now, when you go back and do your stat calc, fourth one down, linreg, enter, that'll show all four values. So if you had that problem before, that should fix it. Getting back to the numbers we just generated, we are going to use this to figure out both the correlation and uh, the line of best fit. So first it says write the equation. It says y equals ax plus b. It's kind of like y equals mx plus b, except they call it a. a is given to us. So a, if you round it off to three decimals, is 0.485. So y equals 0.485. And then it says x. So we're going to leave y and x as y and x. And then the b, right here, the b plus b is also defined for us. It's a number. Plus negative 932.7. So I would actually just write minus 932. We can go ahead and go to three decimals just to be consistent here. It's really important that you don't round off too quickly on your slope here because it's going to be multiplied by very large numbers and that can really throw off your, your uh, predictions if you round this too soon. So I would always go at least three decimals when you're dealing with this. So this is my uh, equation of my line of best fit or my linear regression line. The other thing is the correlation coefficient. I know it's not written on your notes, but correlation coefficient. And that is R. So correla correlation coefficient is going to be R right down here. And we would say R is equal to 0 0.80, let's say. So 0 0.80 is your correlation coefficient. And that tells you how good of a line this is. So this tells you what is the equation of the line, just like we have slope intercept uh, with any line, and this tells you how good it's going to be. The closer to one this is, or the closer to negative one, the better it is. If it's close to zero, then it's not a very good line. So that is how you get it from your calculator.